The red kite's history is one of persecution. In the 19th century, the bird was hunted close to extinction, another victim of human cruelty. But since 1989 and a scheme to repopulate Britain with the bird, red kites have fought back. These majestic birds now flourish in Wales, England and Scotland. As the project comes to a close, there's one last missing link, the North East. Chicks have been brought from the Chilterns, where they'll be cared for until they're ready for release into the wild in a few weeks' time. So where are the birds? Birds are here on the <laughs> shelf. So what exactly are we looking at here? We're looking at red kites, juvenile red kites, which are about four to five weeks old. They're kind of spread out, flat. What, what's happening here? They're plain dead. Obviously, um, if there's any predators about, they would get an alarm call off the parents and they would crouch down as though they were dead. And then if it was a predator like a fox, they would, um, the fox would just have a nose at them, think they were dead, and would say, oh, I'll come back later for this. They look dead and they're not moving, but in other ways they look incredibly alert, don't they? You can yeah, see the yeah. eyes really focused. They know what's going on, yeah. If you would like to pick up a bird and put it in the carrier. You make it sound very easy. Right, OK, if you easy? just... You get, there's two ways you can actually do it. Tuck his legs in, you know, right. hold his le legs in okay. with, your, with your fingers. That's, that's okay. an easy way to, to carry it. Right, see how he's playing real dead there. Actually sticking his tongue out like yeah. I'm really, really dead. Yeah. And then can you do one hand here? Then you said between the feet, is mm -hmm. that right? You find it easier if you actually put them... Right, back down. Back down. It's amazing that playing dead thing, isn't it? And just Tongue out and everything. And so I've got... And then roll them back. And then, then just like that? Them roll them back onto you. Yeah? Yeah. And I feel he's suddenly going to show me he's alive by having a go of my finger. In uh, this cage here? Yeah. Yes. Well, what we do is we feed them up. Um, get them health checked, what, which is what we're doing today. And in three weeks they might be flying around they'll the skies be, above us? They'll be flying around the Derwent Valley, yes. Beautiful. Releasing red kites near urban areas is a world first. Some kites have been released here already. They're thriving and project manager Keith Bowie has plenty to celebrate. The big attraction from this spot is that we've got the first pair of nesting kites in the northeast of England since the reign of George III, almost 200 years. I love the way earlier it was effortlessly flying sideways. Well, not always flying, just sort of, just sort of drifting sideways. I always think of them actually just feeling their way. And if you actually watch a kite, one wing is moving almost independently to the other wing. It's moving independently to the tail. The tail's a rudder that steers them through the sky. And they're just feeling every little bit of the air to give them lift. It's back to this life balance thing. It's they kind do of liquidy, little, feeling they flowing do with, with the absolutely, air. Absolutely, they do as little as possible. Yeah. And if they can, they can quite comfortably fly four or five miles without flapping their wings, if the conditions are right. Nice breezy today, it's perfect for kites. Before our young red kites can be released, they need to be given a full health check. Specialist vets from London Zoological Society are on hand to assess the birds. The vets check eyesight, the birds' internal organs and take blood samples. Every bird must be fully fit before it's released into the wild. But one of these birds is causing concern. There's no way it's healthy enough for release. You can see how laboured his breathing is. The so first thing I noticed was that he was oh, making an awful lot of respiratory noise. He was actually yeah. wheezing. Okay. Um, and now that I feel his abdomen, he's got a large mass in his abdomen, which is very unusual in a young bird. Am I allowed to touch? Yeah. You can actually feel as it goes down, that sort of... Yeah. You can sort of feel a bit of vibration in it. Is that yeah. wrong? <laughs> That's wrong, yeah. Well, in an older bird, you'd be thinking it might be a tumour. Um, but... You know, he, this bird's only about seven, seven weeks old, approximately, so that would be very unlikely. He might have an impaction, he might have a, a bowel impaction, or he might have a congenital abnormality. Not being released is now the least of this bird's problems. The vet may have to operate if its breathing doesn't improve. We're back in the Derwent Valley in a field just a mile or two away from where we saw the fully grown kites flying around last time. But now the chicks that we saw are ready to be released. Now we saw them being checked out by the vets to make sure they were going to be healthy, going to survive out here in the open. 
They're going to be releasing, I think, four today. We can just have a look in this hole and see how they're getting on. They come round in. They've lost those downy feathers and they now look to me more like adult birds. Let's not delay their freedom any longer. Let's go and find Keith Bowie, who heads the project here. He's going to show me how to release them. After an absence of 100 years, the reintroduction of red kites has caught the imagination of locals and bird watchers from across the northeast. The work that's done by the vets has uh, paid dividends. They're all hit, fit and healthy. The one or two birds that was minor uh, health queries about, all those health queries have been resolved. A couple of them had a little bit of medication. But there was one that you were particularly concerned about. It had a lump inside. They thought it might have been a tumour or maybe just a big mouse. What's happened to that one? Actually, what that was was a pellet. And here we actually have the uh, indigestible remains of basically kite food. So the lump, the mass, was actually part of its natural process, and it came out the next morning. And it the was nothing more harmful than and the, the lump remains was gone. of eaten mouse. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Well, this is it. This is the moment when we're going to release the kites. We're going to open this door ever so gently, and they should fly out to freedom. OK, Celia? Wow! Beautiful. They both shot out almost together, and they're circling the field. One going right, one going up and left. One's now disappeared into the trees. Must be such a feeling after being kept in tiny boxes and then crates like this, moved around, shipped around the country. Finally to feel this is it. What are they actually doing? What's going through their minds? Uh, as far as you can tell, as a mind reader of birds. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I couldn't say, but I suspect they think, well, it's nice to be out of the confines of the aviary for a start. And very soon now, they'll be buddying up with some of the kites that we've been seeing flying around earlier this morning. So the nice thing is, with, because the social birds, the birds that have been released previously and have come back from previous years, will come along and they'll actually usher these babies around and they'll actually take them to food sources and things like that. We provide them with a little bit of supplementary feed on first release, but it's amazing how quickly all the more uh, experienced birds will come along and help these birds. It's really impressive. It's great to see the birds out and flying free, but in fact, this project is about people as well as birds because they're being released in a relatively built up area. You can't tell it around here in this field, but Gateshead's over there, Newcastle a bit further on. But the end goal is definitely that these birds should do without people, that they should be able to survive and thrive soaring on their own wings. <laughs>